continuing here. I'm not done. To finish that thought. So, like I said, you got a flat in New New York City, and uh, it costs two thousand bucks a month. Let's say, just you know, that's it. One room, efficiency, studio, apartment. And Section Eight says, well, you got a minimum wage job, and all you can afford to pay as your cost share is two hundred bucks. So the government steps in, and they got to pay the other eighteen hundred bucks, ninety percent of your rent is being paid by the government through this section 8 voucher Do you understand that goes in the landlord's pocket and the landlord of course takes that if they still owe money on the property and they pay down their mortgage with that right so you see how this thing works it's a snake eating its tail it can't work it's it doom it's doomed to destruction from its inception to run it like this so let's say you cut it in half take that money give everybody middle class upper middle class that you know, a, a, a nice tax cut because you're subsidizing rich dad, remember, to make these landlords fabulously wealthy, okay? Uh, okay, so you get a big tax cut, and then he sets aside $10, million, 10 billion of that, let's say, to actually fix the problem, to purchase people homes. You understand? You're going to see rents go down, okay? And that's what you want to see. You need to see that. You can say, well, some people are going to get hurt. Well, that's right, but people are dying already, so they're not going to get hurt any more than that, are they? That's the situation we have, and it's like pulling a Band-Aid off. It might hurt a second while the Band-Aid is just being ripped off. You know, and I've always suggested doing it as gently as possible, but it's not getting done. It's just staying there forever and ever, and what's going to happen if you leave a Band-Aid on your skin forever and ever? I mean, it's just going to decompose and become a part of your body I mean it can't work it doesn't work it never works your body rejects it and that's what's happening here the body of humanity is rejecting the evil we know we're being taken for a big fat huge ride and we're tired of it all of us want the problems fixed damn it that's it we're serious now this Brexit in, in Europe in uh, in England What's going on in Europe? People are pissed off, man, and they know who you, the monsters are. They know where the seat of evil is. They know where the root causers reside. <laughs> Money printing class and all these highfalutin politicians that validate and legitimize the whims of these people. Okay? You bunch of liars and cheaters, and then you vote yourselves raises. Okay? How is that okay in any stretch of the imagination? You're evil. And you're going down. So that's the hope I give people. Is say, look, it's rough. It's going to get rough, man. Well, that Band-Aid's being pulled off. But one way or another, sooner or later, even if Donald Trump gets killed, <coughs> sooner or later, God's will is going to be accomplished because good is stronger than bad. Light is stronger than darkness. Right is stronger than wrong. It's, it goes on and on in that fashion. And that's what's going to happen. So you can fight it, you can kick and scream against goodwill coming to humanity. But it's coming, man. And just everybody's got to wake up to that fact. And how it can come the most gentle way is through sound economic policies. So where your currency is sound and stable and increasing in worth. Slowly, gently, gradually, but permanently. That's it. As an end as an end to where your currency is worth so much you don't care about money anymore. It's not hard to figure out how that could work. It can work, and it would work if it was allowed to work. But the people running our lives, in the shadows there, okay, all those people that are influencing the highfalutin politicians, that are influencing the money masters, that have the, the, the copyright to the money printing presses, these infinite heirs, okay, forget trillionaires, these are infinite heirs, okay, so as long as they hold that power and they're in control of our lives, this is going to go on and on and on perpetually and definitely forever and ever and ever and just get worse and worse and worse until we rise up against it, not violently, but with intellect and with demands, verbal demands, exposing these people and say, no, you're a liar. Let's do the math. Let's do the math. Let's sit here logically and figure this thing out. And that's what I'm doing. And I know what the hell I'm talking about. That's why nobody refutes the things I'm saying. Because they know deep down in their heart and soul, I'm honest, I'm true, I'm real. And I know what I'm talking I'm using intellect. On this one subject, I know what I'm talking about. 
I know how the high cost of housing affects everything. This chain reaction inflation. Of course, the cost for other goods and services have to go up. It could be traced here. And here's why it happened. Here's who did it. Here's who's benefiting. All these special interest groups colluding, forming this gigantic, uh, horrendous monopoly that's working against us. And the government's involved. And that's what makes it fascist. Okay, they're supposed to be working for us, every single one of them, from the city, the county, the state, and the federal government are working for you and me. We're the taxpayers. Okay, do you understand? And they're not doing that. That's why we've got people dying out in the street. That's what's going on here. More and more homeless, folks. It's true. I am not making stuff up. I'm telling you the problem's not being fixed. It's not even at a standstill. It's getting worse, and we've got to confront it. The debasement of our currency is happening through an increase in your cost of living, just like a scale. Your cost of living goes up. The worth of your currency goes down concurrently, commensurately, proportionately. That's just the way it works. So get that through. Everybody get that through your head, and then let other people know how it works. Tell them it's such pure, logical, irrefutable terms, just like I've done for you. Cogent, clear, mathematic, logical terms. That's it. Convey it. Impart that to others, that knowledge, that understanding. We've got to become empowered. That's it. The empowerment through the knowledge, accurate information, accurate education. Okay? And that's, it's, it's that simple. It's really very simple. But one way or another, we've got to figure out a way to wean ourselves off the money. And that's why I'm a proponent of true capitalist principles, which, it, which is free market. It's supply and demand. It's competitive. And, and what happens is everybody just becomes free. That's it. And if some people just you know, need to have this vast advantage over others, well, they're going to go by the wayside. They're going to be rendered irrelevant. Nobody's going to care or know who they are anymore. Because they don't have that clout. They don't have that power over us anymore. When we're completely free and we're prosperous and we're safe and secure all around the world, not just in America, that's what we're shooting for, folks. We're shooting for releasing all that clean, suppressed energy technology out there. Okay, while your energy rates are going up because they say, hey, if we're selling less of this stuff because people are subsidizing themselves with solar, somebody's got to pay that. We can't accept a lower price, so they're raising people's energy costs. You understand? And then they've got this technology, what they call disruptive technologies. That's what this, these clean, renewable, infinite energy supplies are. They're disruptive to the status quo. Can we worry about that? If we figure out an alternative to gasoline, like hydrogen, for example, you know, look up a guy named Bob Lazar, a nuclear physicist that specializes in propulsion systems. He makes his own hydrogen off a solar panel. He puts it in a tank, puts it in his Corvette, goes 750 miles before it needs to switch to gasoline use. This is what we could all be doing, folks. Simple. Simple. Better yet, we could design to where our engines are producing hydrogen only on demand. That's the, what we could have. It's just miniaturizing a hydrogen production plant, putting it under the hood of your car. It's as simple as that. Very powerful fuel that you can definitely run engines on. They don't want you to figure this stuff out. And we could get the energy. There's plenty of energy coming from the sun. It's all very simple. But it's disruptive because to who? The oil companies. All those special interest groups that have an interest in the oil, in the cost of uh, price of oil. Do you understand how this works? All these solutions are staring us in the face. And it's that evil. So when you first find out, when you realize that I'm telling you the truth. And it's traumatizing. Okay, it's like PTSD. And then you get survivors go, you go, my God, you know, now I feel guilty about my extravagant lifestyle. And all this is what happened to Trump. And then he became an egalitarian. He said, no, I want to do something for the people. I love regular people. I know these people aren't necessarily bad or stupid or lazy just because they're extremely poor. Maybe they're just misfits. They don't fit in. Jesus said, that's me. That's me out there on the street. That's what he said, essentially. So when you see the light and you go, oh, my God. We've got to do something. We call ourselves a Christian nation. My foot. We're not. By our fruits, by our behavior, we're not. We're evil. We're an evil nation. And we've got to step up to the plate and say, no, I demand justice. I demand to be a Christian nation. And I'm going to stand up. And I'm going to stand up for the downtrodden, the, downtrodden, the dispossessed out there. I'm going to speak up for Jesus. That's all you're doing. 
So when you spread anything that I've got to say that's worth spreading, okay, and I, the economic stuff I'm telling you, it, look, I've studied it. It's my, my forte. It's, it's what I'm interested in because I, it's what I've discovered about poverty. It's being created. It's not mistake. It's not incompetency. It's intent. It's deliberation by these monsters that create the policy we all live under. They're manipulating us six ways to Sunday, right? Aren't they through the educational system? This is it, man. They're saying, oh, well, this is useful. and I want you to learn this and that. But we don't care. about eh, No value in ethics or principles and, you know, the, uh, good business practice. Nothing like that. No, no, we don't need to, they don't need to learn about true capitalism, supply and demand and free markets and all this and sound money. They don't need to know about that. They don't need to know that there's solutions to all of our problems. But there's these huge swaths of special interest groups that are colluding as one big monopoly and ganging up on people to prevent the problems from being solved because then they lose their power, their position, their place. So they're, they're attached at the hip to this satanic entity. That's but the money printing class. Remember the infinite errors. All these these highfalutin politicians out there, the Congress, Senate, that all these that sign off, okay, on these things. What Bill Clinton did to America with allowing the gla the expiration of the Glass Steagall Act, and the mainstream media won't talk about consumer protections. They don't. This all went past them. Oh, you know what was that thing in 2008, where over 90 percent of the American people smelled something bad here, and they said we don't want this thing, man. No, no, capitalism. We know what a market correction is, and they've been pumping up this housing market. We knew they were lending recklessly. Okay, and we knew that we needed to see a correction back in 2008. They didn't allow that to happen, did they? Okay, that's why housing prices didn't fall through the floor, is because of what they did. Those highfalutin politicians, in concert with the Federal Reservists, okay, the top money lovers, the infinite heirs, conspired against the best welfare of the American people, what is in the best interest of the American people. They went against that and they did that. Therefore, locking it in place, therefore causing all these problems. And then Bush just pumped it up. He exacerbated it more and more, telling you, invest, buy. You know, this is what the terrorists hate. When we know that whole 9-11 thing was, was a whole big lie. Okay, that was, you know, look at what the underwriters laboratory says. Look at what a group of over 2,200 architects and engineers say. Okay, they say it's preposterous, ridiculous, absurd, could not have happened that way. It was a scam. It was an inside job. It just takes a small cadre of evildoers, okay, that would do such a thing. Maybe they were told that there, you know, there's asbestos in the building and it's going to have to be demolished. Okay, maybe they were lied to and then later all of that team that worked on planting the explosives in the building, they were all wiped out by another murderous team of, uh, of uh, mercenaries, okay? We know you can hire killers. What's so hard to believe about this stuff? That Building 7 that fell down wasn't even hit by a plane. We had a couple of small, cool fires burning in it. The whole thing collapsed in its footprint. And you think that these architects and engineers are going to sit there and not speak out against this when their reputations are clearly on the line? Come on, let's wake up, folks. Let's just be honest with ourselves. We don't want to be honest because we're, everybody's afraid. They're afraid of Satan. What's he going to do to me? Okay, you can't worry about that, man. Stick your neck out there. Jump into the fray, man. The fray. This is, this is the fighting the good fight for humanity, for God, for saying I'm standing up. I, and all I'm doing, I just want to be worthy to go to a better world. That's what you should want. I'm anxious for nothing except the return of Jesus, for His will to be installed permanently on Earth, in favor of the good, the decent, the upright, for just regular old human beings that want justice to prevail on earth, not just for themselves, but for all their other brothers and sisters out there, for their family and friends, for everybody. That's the way it's got to be. Freedom is not the kind of thing that you can attain alone. You don't go this thing alone. We go together. And we, we increase knowledge by speaking out, talking to each other, and just sharing ideas. Like they say, ideas are bulletproof. And that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to convey what I know. 
And in simple terms, so people can say, yeah, it's true. It's absolutely true what's going on here. And we understand the motivation. We understand the incentive. Uh, we understand what's in the heart of men. We know they're fearful because we see fear in our own lives. We see our own economic financial insecurities. You say, I don't want to be that guy living out in the bridge, so I better not rub somebody the wrong way. I better not rub my boss the wrong way. Or maybe that's me homeless and I can't find a job anymore because the machines are taking more and more of the job. So I totally understand understand everybody's fear God understands it but we've got to get honest or else our, our our eternity is at stake here our salvation is at stake where we go from here is 